All right, let's see. What do we got going on over here? Uh, oh. Hey, Mr. Dino. What you got there? Take a look here. Oh, it's my compile notes for the time I got reincarnated as a slime. Yeah, I better get on this. So those keeping up with this tournament will know we're just two matches away from the end of round one. So today we're going to look at Mob Psycho 100 versus that time I got reincarnated as a slime. That time I got reincarnated as slime is actually hitting a lot of things that I'm enjoying right now in my reading in general. I'm starting to find the genre of lit RPG and I feel like this fits comfortably within that idea and in a way that I enjoy my lit RPG books and my lit RPG material to be. That is, we have a character with a seemingly random assortment of powers or a seemingly useless power, but they leverage it in such a way that they're actually very strong and very capable. So. Overall, I was going into this one already feeling like it was going to be something I'm in the mood for and something that I was going to enjoy. For characters, I gave it a six. Uh, this suffers from the same thing that a lot of these fantasy, uh, are, these fantasy manga titles are giving me in that we have a lot of characters and they just don't have any depth. Even the protagonist, we don't find out anything about him before his death death at the beginning of the comic. All these different characters, they're all very interesting, but because they have so little screen time, we don't get any depth from them, and that's a real detriment. So, like, fun characters, interesting characters, but, like, there's nothing else there. For the setting, I'm giving it a 7. Uh, as I said, I'm in my lit RPG era, so I'm really enjoying this idea of this world with these interesting RPG rules to it. I especially loved the naming magic that was in here. Like if you give something a name that gives them more power, uh, a very interesting take on a concept I've seen before within Name of the Wind and within the Earthsea books, but just presented in a way that's a little bit more clear cut and a little bit more in line with the tone they're going for in the story. For the writing and art, I'm giving it a six. Again, with these fantasy titles, we're getting that same very comfortable aesthetic with the character design nothing really stood out to me here as far as characters go and i felt like the writing relied a little bit too much on internal monologue with the main character kind of info dumping for the benefit of the audience that was kind of not as strong as it could have been but still okay for intrigue i'm giving it a seven i am interested in seeing how this world works and seeing how it develops from this point forward. There's a very predictable escalation of stakes at the end of the story. Again, we're in that fantasy genre, we're in that fantasy archetypes, and so it's not anything mind-blowing or original. The mechanics of the world are engaging enough that I do want to see how it works out in the future. For relationships, I'm giving it a five. Uh, Rimaru is the, the the main character our slime protagonist fails upward in his acquisition of followers and friends there's not a whole lot of complexity with the relationships it's meant to be funny and it works most of the time so harmless but not anything with any real depth or complexity the plot i'm giving it a seven we seem to go from problem to problem just moving from one issue to the next and again this is a very predictable kind of storytelling but there is a little bit of a wider world building aspect with uh, early on there's a dragon and uh, Uraru, uh like absorbs him and to try to get him out of this situation. Again, trying to use his powers in a clever way. And the absence of that dragon actually 
does have ramifications for the world at large, which I thought was really interesting. I was kind of conceptualizing it from like a DM perspective. If I was going to be running a, a D&D campaign and this idea of this dragon just suddenly disappears, what's the fallout? What's the ramifications behind that? So I thought that was cool. Um, but again, like as far as the plot progression, it's just like these bad guys show up and we have to deal with them. And like these bad guys show up and we have to deal with them. And it just moves from point to point and it's not anything exceptional. Overall enjoyment comes in at an eight out of 10. Again, because it's lit RPG, because this is something that I'm currently really hungry for, really interested in, it really fell in my wheelhouse right now. And so I was overall enjoying it despite its shortcomings, despite some of maybe the lackluster uh, points it was getting in other areas. I did overall really enjoy the read. That time I got reincarnated as a slime gets a raw score of 46, which is equivalent to a 6.5 out of 10. Let's see how it stacks up against Mob Psycho 100. All right, so Mob Psycho 100 is our next title to look at. We're going to jump straight into the Copile score here. I will say that I knew the popularity of this title. I knew it was a comedy series, and I knew it was written by one, the same author as One Punch Man, which I have read before. And so I was expecting kind of uh, zany offbeat humor in this as well, but on a broader scale, didn't really know much about what was going to happen. Characters, I gave a seven. There were some genuinely funny characters in here, and there were some genuinely annoying characters that I didn't really like. I don't feel like this is one that introduces too many characters, and we do have a good amount of uh, character development within the story, so that was all positive. Setting gets a six. It's essentially modern day Japan just with uh, spirits and ghosts incorporated into it as well. And played in some really funny ways with Reagan. He offers mundane solutions to some people who are being haunted or think they're being haunted. And he convinces others that everyday things that are happening to them are actually a haunting because he's a con artist and he just wants to get money out of people. It's fun seeing that kind of take on in a world that has ghosts and spirits and you know that this is a, a known entity, the kind of people who are gonna take advantage of it. And again, it's played in a very funny way. Art and writing is where this one's really gonna get hit. Um, I did not care for the art in this at all. I think it was the weakest art that I've seen out of any of the titles I've looked at so far. And I'm very curious if this is a stylistic choice from one. For some reason, it feels less so. It's very sketchy in nature. It didn't really strike me as um, interesting, and I didn't see a purpose behind it. Plot, I gave a six. The early chapters of a gag series. So, you know, I'm not expecting... Um, like integration of the plot so we we don't get that at all it goes from story to story and there's some connective tissue between chapter to chapter but it's not really it's not really progressing it's not really going anywhere so yeah it didn't it didn't really grab me it brings us to intrigue which gets a seven so again like better than average a little bit better than average um the counter for mobs ability like gradually ticking up as the story goes on was a good way of including some tension and some intrigue early on in the story and getting you to read further because you want to see what happens when that gets to 100. Toward the end there's this malevolent spirit that now has to play kind of a sidekick role to mob after he after he beats him and so like that leads to some future plots that they could possibly do, which goes to intrigue. But overall, like I said, it was 
decent the relationships so while mob and reagan's relationship is mostly played for laughs and like mob is just completely gullible like he believes that reagan is this like amazing uh spirit medium and he's a, a con man obviously and not even like a very good one or a very convincing one um but there was something there and it was playful and fun and a lot of the humor that I got from this. A lot of the humor derives from their interactions with each other. Overall enjoyment, I gave it a 7. So not as high as that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Um, it had me laughing out loud a good number of times reading through this. So it was fun, but I also found myself getting a little bored at times. This is the most narratively dense comic. Uh, most narratively dense manga out of everything I've read so far. So if you open up any given page, you can see there's quite a bit of dialogue within the chapters. And I felt like not all of it was positive. Not all of it was serving the story. Uh, it felt a little verbose. Occasionally it did drag and I felt myself like wanting to get to the next part or get to the next chapter and it felt like it was taking a very long time. Odd for a comedy series to have so much text and have so much dialogue. Um, I would expect that of something more uh, complex and introspective and not from, again, a gag manga uh, comedy series. Overall numbers. Raw score of a 43, which equates to a 6.41 out of 10 for Mob Psycho 100, which means by the slimmest margin so far, that time I got reincarnated as a slime is going to move on to our next round. So uh, here is what the current status of the tournament looks like. We have one more match to go in round one. Jujutsu Kaisen versus Chainsaw Man. Probably my two most anticipated titles for this whole tournament going up against each other in this first round. So I will get that video out next week and we will see how the first round of this tournament shakes out. Please let me know down in the comments below if you are a fan of Mob Psycho 100, if you are a fan of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, what do you like about them? What is appealing about them? What draws you to these titles? I think it was great that we had two uh, comedy titles up against each other in this first round. It gave me a good sense of what the comedy scene is like in manga recently and um it was fun like this was this was a this was one that had me smiling and laughing the most um just from the absurdity of what was happening in the comics so um yeah let me know down below if you like one of these series what's appealing about it to you i hope your reading journey is going well and until the next one take care